Hi everyone and welcome to the Flight Briefing Room. In this video I'm going to talk about how I use an air chart like this or like this to navigate on my flights. This is my own personal technique, it's kind of a pepper potting technique, it's very much simpler than the flight planning technique where you need a whiz wheel to do whiz, wind drift calculations and all of the above. I always fly with an altimeter that's either got QNH or QFE settings so I know exactly how high I am but I do actually find it a personal challenge to take an air chart like this and go and find somewhere I've never actually been to before without using a GPS as a personal challenge for myself. The beauty of a paramotor is you've got unparalleled visibility, there's no combing in front of you, you're not sitting in anything that restricts your vision, but it's just a pleasure to be able to use an air chart to get from A to B. So let's go and have a look at these in a bit more detail and I'll show you the route that I flew on this flight. So when I fly I use a map holder. Uh, this is actually a normal OS walking map holder and all I've done is added a key ring and on my harness is a dog clip with a bit of bungee and it allows you to flex and manoeuvre the, uh, the map case around in orientation. But you can actually get quite a lot of distance on two sides of one of these map, map cases. But anyway, I'll put that to one side. The first of the two maps, uh, the first one is 1 to 500,000 or commonly known as half mil charts. They've got a lot of detail including the airways because they actually take all the airspace above 5,000 feet. The quarter mil chart, which is the one I'll come to in a very brief second, only takes the airspace below 5,000 feet. As you can see, there is significant difference in the level of detail that you can see on each chart, air chart. So I don't personally like navigating on a paramotor with this because there's insufficient detail for me to navigate by. So I'm going to put that to one side. This is the chart that I actually used during the flight. Uh, to uh, to Farway Common, I know I kept pronouncing that incorrectly, and there's Branscombe on the uh, on the south coast. I personally do like quarter mil charts because, as you can see, without making it too blurry and without any glare, there is lots of detail. You can see forest areas, you can see all the country lanes, the A roads, the B roads, um, and they do also highlight more of the power lines, especially the big what I call two forty footers. Um, so you can actually see power lines on these charts as well. Okay, so the route that I flew was from our pottery. So again, first reference point. Second reference point was the mast. You may just be able to make it out during the uh, during the flight. Here's the A30 that I cross. There's a set of power lines. Here's Honiton. There's Seaton. So you can see that there's lots and lots of reference points that I can orientate by. There's Farway Common and there's Branscombe. And say any further, and I hit the water. So they're all very, very useful reference points. You also hear me talking about two roads that form a sort of corner of a triangle. That's these two roads here. The human eye tends to see a lot more than the GoPro does. So during the flight, I'll be talking about things that you may not be able to see, which is why I want to sort of pre brief it here. So, anyway, let's leave the map here and let's go flying. <laughs> I think today is going to be an interesting day because it's just so busy everywhere because for so long we've had rubbish, rubbish weather. Everybody's going to be out today, so head on a swivel, airmanship, look out. It's going to be ironic today because I want to do a bit of airshot navigation. I want to navigate without my GPS to refresh those skills. Just waiting for Alex to get airborne. And I discovered when I got here, there's a company that are testing really big kites. So we've come up with a deconfliction plan for them. What a gorgeous day to go flying. It's a very light wind, it was a lovely forward. My way of uh, navigating by a chart is to, a bit like rock climbing. You always have at least three reference points. Two will only give you a bias, but it won't give you confirmation. And I'm kind of a kid like that rock climbing thing where you don't move until you've got three good points. Otherwise you're just gonna fall off. And for paramotor flying, I'm generally below 5,000 feet. So as I've probably already said, I use the quarter mil charts because they just have more detail. I think the last time Alex and I actually flew together was about May last year. 
It's been so busy, especially with me trying to get flights in for the uh, the power of the PB. It was if it's flyable, I've got to fly the flex wing. Trying to align weather and instructor and time off work is not easy. And there's an aircraft off to my right. There's an aircraft off to my front. He looks like he's in the circuit pattern of Dunk as well. He's joining downwind for the circuit pattern of 04. And there's an aircraft off up to my, uh, my 10 o'clock high who's joining the circuit as well. Like I said, it's going to be busy today. Oh, there's a second aircraft in the pattern as well. That's four aircraft. So I'm going to fly away from them. I'm just loitering, slowly gaining height. Hey, Alex is up. Alex up on airport. I think he's coming into land. He's not happy. So, I think I'm going to go off now, I'm going to leave him. So I can't actually see Branscombe or Farway Common, but I know that there's a road over there, the A30. So on my chart, which I'll get out in a moment, I can orientate between that, the mast and Seaton. I've got three reference points, okay? I haven't got much else to go by other than roads because there's a road down here to my right, the road there. I need to make sure that I am orientated correctly. So I've got three, if not four, reference points. And that's how I navigate by map. When I did the coast to coast, the legs that I was actually flying, I wasn't really using the GPS because I'd created such big landmarks to reference by. It, did, it was all designed that I could navigate the thing by map if the GPS failed. Always having a backup. So, noting your time, noting your ground speed, noting how long it should take to get to those points. It was all marked on the map. I did all the prep work beforehand. But, old analogy, prior planning prevents people performance is, uh, is what I run by. So I'm going to get on with this flight and concentrate because there's a lot going on and I'll join you when I get to one of my reference points. So I should technically overfly the A30 and then uh, Honiton is off to my right which gives me my handrails. I think it's a, a walking term really. I've got the mast on my left, Honiton on my right and Branscombe should be in between of those two reference points. If the conditions are such that your visibility isn't so good horizontally, although you could be legal, uh, you sort of have to start drawing your reference points into smaller and smaller points. And that's why I like flying off the quarter mill charts, because they have those B roads, the smaller villages, that the, the half mill charts just don't show. And one of the things I was taught a long, long time ago is don't have press on itis. If you're unsure you lose one of your reference points, you've gone down to two, go back. Go back and find that third point to make sure you are where you want to be. So I'm crossing over the A30 now. So that's actually giving me a reference point as to where I need to be. But I've got no horizontal reference point, I've only got a depth reference point. I say horizontal, I know I'm between that mast over there, which the GoPro may show, and I know I'm between that and Honiton. This is also helpful is when you're constantly looking out for your land outs, uh, it, it means you actually know where you are. I also tend to handrail my, um, my navigation to roads so that if I do have an engine out, I'm not too far away from um, a pickup point. Okay, you're going to be sitting there for a while for a friend to come and find you and other bits and pieces, but at least you can give them a reference point. I mean, this is only a short cross country today. It really is a tiny one. So we're looking at this and my orientation. Farway Common is south of Honiton. And by this, I'm maybe about seven or eight k's kilometers. I've got Seaton, the mast, power lines, Honiton. So again, it's checking, back checking. 
I spotted Branscombe, not because uh, I was looking for it, but when I was nabbing on the Icarus X, the route took us along the south coastline. And I spotted a pitch uh, biplane doing some aerobatic. Well, where's that? Looked around, and just before I got to near seated, I saw the airstrip. So I made a bit of a, an immediate diversion. A, to uh, keep away from this guy's airspace, his, his aerobatic block. So I didn't notice on the NOTAM, there was nothing there. But never ever thought about it afterwards to go back and check out what was there. But Branscombe isn't just an airstrip, it's an airstrip with a campsite. So I'm going to try and contact them and see if they'll let me go paracamping there. Which would be quite nice. I can see the contours and it looks like Fairway Common is over there because there's a ridge line just before it in south of Honiton. So I'm going to route to Fairway Common first, overfly it, keep outside. I've checked their circuit pattern, but the uh, the chap I spoke to mentioned that actually the, uh, the airfield is so sodden that people aren't really coming in. Now what's quite useful, I've looked on the map, I've got the, uh, the A375 uh, and the another major road, can't see what it is under the numbers. Now they go to, uh, to a sort of a, a triangle, so actually I can use those as reference points if I've gone too far, look, I need to look for the major roads. And if I miss that, I hit the sea. So there is a road that goes just before it and I can see that. Nice smoke indicator for any winds if I've land out. So I can see the strip down there, and that looks like what it looks like on the uh, on the chart. I can see two runways cut in. So that's far away common, and that matches all the reference points with the roads. Yes, and distinctly two runways. Yep, and the road down the side of it. Cool. Now by air chart. Very nice, and not too far away either. I'm at well over circuit high, I'm at 1800 feet QFE. It's a very, very high pressure day today. I think I saw a windy the other day about 1046 hectopascals, which is really high. And I can see Branscombe dead ahead. So, okay, it's a bit easier for now because I hit the sea straight afterwards. But it's just using those handrail reference points. One thing I forgot to mention, and it was uh, something that was taught to me by one of my instructors 20 odd years ago, is when you take off from a new site that you're going to return to, when you get to a thousand feet, if you can, you don't have to turn if you can look back, but look back at the airfield. And the reason I say that is, you think you know what it looks like, but when you come to reference it, everything changes. So it's a nice return leg because I've got all my reference points. Okay, I'm 180 out. But I've got the radio mast, or transmission mast ahead, I've got the power lines, I've got Honiton. So again, I'm between my two biasing hand railing reference points. All right, I need to clean the wing up. Let's uh, get ready to come in and land. Get my feet working. The only bit that's cold at the minute is my feet, which is a novelty for me because it's not in my hands. Uh, windsock. Yep. I can't see any kites, but I'm going to bias to the roadside, not the runway side, when I descend. Right. Can't see any traffic. Flight deck secure. Engine is off. Forward. Check, check, check. Hold. Fully flare. And we're down. Oh, a lovely flight. So 
I hope you found that video useful on how I personally use an air chart for just basic navigation, uh, nothing accurate, no speeds and times. The guys that really do take this sort of navigation to the next level are those who do sort of British Open and World Paramotor Open competitions where they are literally time on task within seconds and that is some very, very accurate flying. So I hope some of you found uh, elements of that video useful, but until the next time everybody, fly safe. Thank you.